Hey guys, welcome to the Small Engine Nation channel. My name is Phil. Today we are continuing working on the Aaron's 1130 DLE snowblower. This is actually my personal 30 inch snowblower. And some of you might have been asking, what is the model number in serial? There is the model, 921006. What I'm gonna be showing you today is actually, we are gonna be putting some anti-seize lubricant on the drive shaft. And while we're at it, we are gonna be taking off the belly pan and inspecting the gears and also seeing if they need some lubrication. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. This is, might be a good time to drain your fuel because we are gonna be pushing or tipping this snowblower forward. I'm actually gonna be uh, putting it, putting the front of the auger chute right onto there so it's not actually laying flat on the ground. It's at an angle which will reduce any gasoline that could potentially come out of the fuel cap. So watch me do the setup and uh, you can do the same setup as I do. So um, let's go ahead and tip this snowblower forward. So we're gonna take it like this and push it forward. Sometimes you may need to adjust here. If you have blocks, you can use blocks as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and lean it like that. And real quick, just letting you know, I do not have any gasoline coming out of my gas tank. So uh, be sure to inspect that. Sometimes you will start getting a leak uh, coming from somewhere, either from the carburetor, but I do have my fuel off as well. So quick tip for you guys there. First thing I like to do is remove these keepers from the uh, axle. Uh, you can sometimes do this with your hand. If not, you can simply use a flathead screwdriver to remove them. And another quick tip, make sure to put all of your metal pieces into a metal plate, parts holder, and put this on the top of your snowblower. They are usually magnetized. So let's go ahead and take the wheel off. And there is usually a key associated with the axle and wheel. So as you can see, this one is a little bit messy. So we're gonna have to tap it off. Going. Slowly, As you can see it's definitely overdue for the grease. So just rock it back and forth until it comes off, like so. Look at that rust. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the back side or right side. Keep her off, throw it on your metal tray. And this one is a split shaft. So as you can see, the shaft came out and it's got gears on the end and the actual axle stayed in. So we need to take the shaft out in order to lubricate it. Sometimes it's a little bit of pain, but we're gonna go ahead and tap it out since it is stuck. Give me a brief moment here. So how I'm planning on tapping the split shaft out of the wheel housing is I got myself an 1116 socket that fits perfectly in there. As you can see, there's a small ridge that we can hit. So we're gonna fit our socket in and give it a light few taps and the shaft should come out. Okay, there's your shaft all loose. Take it right out and then take your socket out. Don't forget about the socket. There it is. Now don't forget to put the keys into the parts tray as well. What we're gonna do next is remove the belly pan. It's held on by four 3-8 screws, one here, one there, one here, and one on the opposite side right here. So let's go ahead and remove those. Now we can simply remove the belly pan. As you can see, this usually happens. You get a lot of debris, um, mice droppings, whatever. If you store it outside, you'll definitely have some mice droppings. So make sure to dump this in the garbage, clean it out as best as you can, and uh, you can do whatever you want from there. So now we have access to the gears, friction wheel, all that sort. We're gonna go ahead and clean all this up, remove all of the uh, bits and pieces here, all the debris, and we're going to go ahead and grease up these components here. First thing we can do is start off with the chain. 
Now I am going to be using some chain and cable lube. I actually got this from Harbor Freight. It's made by Quick Wrench. And we're just going to go ahead and spray some on the chain while we rotate the chain or rotate the axle. Just make sure to coat it. And rotate it back. And uh, just to reduce splatter, we're going to go ahead and just wipe off the excess that could have uh, built up like so. So this kind of cleans up the chain as well while it's spinning. So there's the chain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lube up the gears. I initially used white lithium grease. I don't have any at the moment, so we're just going to be using some general purpose grease here. You can use basically any type of grease that's good for, for cold temperatures. Again, same process. Go ahead, run some grease over the gears. Start off with the lower gear. Shoot some grease on it. You didn't need to go excessive. You just need to have it covering basically all the teeth. And if you have some that's built up, just go ahead and spread it like here. And whatnot. So just spread it around. Get some on the top top gear as well. Spread it out like so. And if you haven't noticed already, I am wearing gloves because this job is dirty. So just letting you know. So now we are going to be greasing up the axle shafts here. I do have some anti seize because it is a split shaft on this axle, so we're gonna be grabbing some more anti-seize. Let me get my anti-seize here. If you don't know, anti-seize Permatex lube. So this just, I'm using this because I don't want the split shaft to stick to the axle. So we're just gonna apply some more anti-seize this year. As you can see, last year's application held up pretty well. So we're just gonna go ahead and lube this up with anti-seize. It's okay to go a little excessive. You don't need to go excessive, but if you do, it's fine. So just coat the whole axle, coat the front of the axle as well, like so. Now you have your split shaft. Now you can reinstall this if, if you need to. Go ahead and add some into the corners here or into the ends, because you can't really go inside all the way. So uh, go ahead and reinstall the split shaft. Make sure it locks in place. There you are. And now we can proceed with lubing up the shafts. So let's go ahead and start with the right. Again, get your grease gun. Whoa, ho, ho. running low. Go ahead and lube up the whole shaft here. Spin it around. So, and go ahead and just spread the grease evenly. All right. And now for the other side as well. Go ahead and move the camera a bit. Same thing with the other side. Some that grease. Spin your shaft and spread the grease evenly. Again, low temperature grease works very well. Go to your local hardware store and ask for low temperature grease or just one that's good for the winter or snow blowers, ask your mechanic, whatever local shop will hook you up. All right, well, now it's time. What I like to do is get some anti-seize and apply it to the key assembly here. And you can also coat your key with anti-seize as well. So that way the key doesn't stick to the shaft. Go ahead and set your key here. 
And now if you start doing that side, they're so uneven that sometimes the keys fall out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the left side by installing the tire. Get your tire here. And now make sure your key is up and you line up the keyway with the key. So install it just like this. Make sure the key goes inside its position. Make sure the key doesn't come on the back end out. And there you go. So I'm gonna show you something in the front of the wheel too that you wanna do. Hey guys, I'm very sorry, forgot to mention <laughs> that before you install your key, go ahead and install your washer. Sorry about that. Washer goes in if you remove the washer. If you didn't remove the washer, don't worry about it. It's there, you don't have to touch it. So we're gonna reinstall the wheel and then I'm gonna show you that one thing that I wanted to show you in the beginning. Okay. Just this last part I wanna show you. Go ahead and apply some anti-seize right around here, the end of the shaft, right before you install your keyway, or I'm sorry, your keeper for the axle. So go ahead, it'll just slide right on there. And you can clean up your wheels if you'd like. I'm gonna be doing that in a separate video on actually how to tune up the whole machine. Uh, be sure to stick around for that part. So let's go ahead and do the right side as well. Uh, quickly, here's a grease fitting that I have on my, this is the gear shaft here for the chain. And I'm just gonna hit it with a few pumps. You don't need a lot of grease in that area, but uh, Go ahead and grease that up if you haven't already. So now let's continue on. We are basically done with the inside of the belly pan with all the gears and transmission and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the belly pan. So same thing we did to the left side. On the right side, you wanna make sure that your shaft is in all the way when it is locked and you can see your shaft or your axle on the end there. Go ahead, don't forget about the washer like we did on the left side. Go ahead and install your washer. And now, you take some anti-seize, put it on the keyway here. I'm gonna take the key, apply some anti-seize onto the key, it won't hurt. And install the key. Now just straighten this out so the key doesn't fall. Makes it a little bit easier to install the wheel. Go ahead, take your wheel. Again, line up the keyway with the key. Make sure the key doesn't slide out on you when you install your wheel. Push it all the way back. Take your keeper. And let me get you slidden over here. All right. So as you can see, we already have some anti-seize on the shaft. We're just gonna apply it, apply it a little bit more. Like so. Just give, give it a little bit of extra coat. And apply our keeper, like so, and it's locked in place. And now both wheels are lubricated. Everything is, everything is lubric lubricated, the whole axle, all the chains, all the gears. And that is basically how you service your transmission, uh, lubricating the transmission, your chains, all your gears. And don't forget to take your magnet tray off and set it onto the toolbox there. And we're just gonna bring that down our snowblower. One hand. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed that video. I know this was a little bit of a long one, but that is how I service my transmissions and your axle and your whatever, keyways, keys, the whole nine yards. So the whole under belly pan has to come off in order to get access to those axles, in order to have access to the chains. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Leave a comment down below. It is the end of the day, guys. I am exhausted, I'm tired. It's time for me to hit the hay. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And also make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more small engine repair videos headed your way. Take care, guys.